why don't we defer to a man who talks about I this for a living? That's our good yeah. friend, Micro Mike. And you can check his stuff out. Lions talk by Chad Sports. He's joining us. Mike, I, I Mike, I, I need your help here, Mike. And welcome to the show. We appreciate you. Thank What's you. What's your thoughts on the JMO thing, man? Do you, do you, do you, I saw you were listening. Do you kind of get what we're saying? Are we crazy? Look, man, I think the highest ceiling is Dan Skipper. Seven feet tall. <laughs> the guy is just an absolute stud. Do you want to run into that? No. <laughs> I get what you're saying, man. His speed, Jamison Williams' speed is electric. It is is literally elite speed out there, like a Tyreek Hill speed. And he does have an extremely high ceiling. If he were to get to that ceiling, I don't know if it's going to be possible. St. Right. Brown is consistent. He consistently gets open. But you're like, look, St. Brown doesn't have that elite speed, but he has elite workout. He has elite, pra- he has elite practice. I don't know if Jamison Williams has a higher ceiling than St. Brown because of that. I mean, I, he does have elite speed, so I'll, I'll give it to the highest ceiling to Jamison Williams, but you got to throw in there the work ethic ethic of St. Brown, what he brings to this football team and to the NFL itself is elite, elite Jerry Rice type of workout where he's not the greatest receiver in the NFL, but he practices so hard. And he works on his craft so hard, it makes him just a an amazing wide receiver. Honestly, that Jerry Rice point kind of got me. I'm not going to lie to you. That's a great <laughs> point. Because uh, Jerry Rice, wor- terrible at the combine, worked his ass off, and he's the GOAT. So I, I get what you're saying there, Mike. I, I want to ask you, it's the week of the NFL draft. Where are you at, M- Mike, with, with kind of the Lions plans? I did my mock draft today. Where, where are you at? We all This is the week of conviction. I think the Lions should trade up. We all kind of agree. Where are you at with the Lions and picking at 29? You think they'll stay there or not? Is there a player you have in mind that you just think the Lions have to get their hands on? I'm just really excited for these mock drafts to be over with. I'm ready for the real thing <laughs> on Thursday. And I know everybody in the chat's getting tired of it. And we're all getting tired of it. I think I, I really do have a feeling the Lions going to trade up. I really think that's what they're going to do there. Maybe go like 15 and to get a cornerback, Quinn Young Mitchell or Terry and Arnold. Or maybe maybe an edge, but I just got a feeling they're going for a cornerback and they're going to trade up in the draft. That's my gut feeling. I don't know nothing about. I haven't heard anything. Just feels like that's something that Brad Holmes may be looking to cook here. Does anyone really believe they stay at twenty nine? I really don't. You think they trade out with the draft and Detroit? I know he said they'd apologize to the fans. Just doesn't seem like that's a Brad Holmes type of thing. At least on Thursday night, and which is now Honolulu Blue Day. So from a bit more putting that there. So I think that's what they're going to do. That's fair. Yeah, I'm I'm on the same thing. I think they're going to trade up. I did a mock draft last week, had him going up and getting Quinion Mitchell. Now, Mike, do you think, and, and I've been uh, have we've had this conversation. Um, I can't remember who it was with last week about him staying put at 29 and kind of doing something that no one really expects and just going offensive lineman. Do you think that would be kind of a shock, or do you think that's something Brad just hey, we, we just want to keep building this offensive line, stay put, um, stay at 29 and just like hey, let's just go with, with what everyone else thinks we're gonna do? Do you think that happens there with the offensive line? It's very possible if they wanted to stay there, and it shouldn't be a shocker to anybody else. That is the strength of the football team. But if you look at the future of this offensive line, there's a lot of questions. Zeitler's on a yeah. one-year deal. He's not probably not going to be back next year. Frank Ragnar, I don't know about you guys. I think he retires after this year. That's my personal opinion. Taylor Decker, we haven't extended him. So if they wanted to go offensive line, I think that's actually a really good decision. Jackson Powers Johnson. They want to get a center or a guard. They can go there if they want to get a tackle and kind of groom it for after Taylor Decker after this year. I don't think they're trading him. That's a possibility. And I, I, I agree that you got to go BPA, even if it's a position that we have a strength at. Brian Branch, I thought we had a strength at safety last year. CJ Gardner Johnson, Kirby Joseph. They go ahead and take Brian Branch. And it just shows you that just go BPA regardless. If they're going to stay there, do that. And if it's offensive line, I'm down for it. I like the BPA. I'm I'm with you on that. Yep. And Mike, uh, going into Thursday, what do you think outside of cornerback? What is your biggest position of need for the Lions? I mean, you kind of mentioned the offensive line. You mentioned edge a little bit. What do you What do you think? Uh, what's your angle on that? Edge, edge, edge. What Davenport? I, Houston? Come you're on, not confident in Davenport. <laughs> Look, oh. I was a big I was a big proponent of making a trade in season last year. I thought we were one player away, yep. you know, but really making that that push, and it seemed like we were. I think if we would have had an edge, 
we potentially get to that Super Bowl. Marcus Davenport, I like how they talk about him. That's how they talk about him. But if you look what he actually has done, it's not that productive. A lot of injury history. I want Ada Hutchison to have a compliment. I want him to have another young edge opposite. I like Joshua Pascal, but he hasn't proved it to me that he could be the opposite. So if they can go ahead and get a Jared Verse on this defensive line, I think it takes this defense to the next level. It's going to help these corners that we got out there. We have to hit the quarterback. It was too often last year. The quarterback was not getting smashed and sacked. Yes, Hutchinson did great the last couple of weeks, including the postseason in sacks. We need other help for him as well. And I think it's important that they get an edge in this year's draft early. There you go, Mike. That was I that agree right. with you, Mike. Like, they need an edge, but so help me God. If it's Chop Robinson, I'll lose my mind. I'll lose flipping my it to mind. the other side. <laughs> Offensively, outside of the big three, the Roma Dunze, Marvin Harrison, and Malik Neighbors, who's your favorite receiver? It doesn't matter if it doesn't have to be first round, but for value wise, who's your favorite wide receiver in this draft? I know he is a first round talent, and I've been warming up to him a lot at Donnie Mitchell. Six two, because I like that size. I really do. And losing Josh Reynolds is actually a big deal, in my opinion. It's over 600 yards. You got Donovan Peoples-Jones, but what if you want to get another guy? And he's sitting right there. That could take that offense to the next level. We have St. Brown, who's always open. Jamison Williams could take the top off. Now you got another guy that can play on the outside and on the inside, if need be, and Jameer Gibbs run all the field. I think if they're wanting to go that route, it would be a little bit of a luxury pick going wide receiver but it would complete the offense, complete it, at least for this year. It would be scary. I mean, you got it. You would have a great offensive line where Jared Goff could just sit there and wait for one of these guys to get open. It would be really difficult for teams to compete with that, especially like the 49ers, who have a lot of offensive weapons, because we're not looking just at the NFC North. we got to look at the NFC. Eagles, Cowboys, and the 49ers. The Lions would match up, I think, even better at that when it comes to the offense. Some yeah, would call that a flat screen TV pick, Mike. Okay, all right. Well, here's where I'm at with it, Mike. <laughs> I, I, me and Lucas argue a lot on this show about wide receiver in the first round. The only I look at the class; it's a deep class, and we talked about it. I agree with you last year. I felt like they were an edge potentially away, more of a pass rush. I know how much they need an edge in a corner, and I don't like the edge depth in this class. Lucas wants a wide receiver in the first round, Mike. I don't know, Mike. That, that to me, that's why I told Lucas, all right? Lucas, and you you would understand this, Mike. Tell me if this analogy stinks or not, all right? Tell me. Just be honest with me. So I told Lucas. Me and Lucas, it's like we we own a home. Home's furnished. It's all, it's all furnished out. We got some TVs, some nice TVs. You know, it's decorating everything. But the leak's roofing, or the, the roof's leaking, <laughs> all right? I messed that up. The roof is leaking, all right? Maybe the siding's not on par. And Lucas is like, Jeff, I, we just need another, you know, 80-inch flat screen. And I'm like, Lucas, I understand that. But there's fucking rain coming in the roof. Where are you at with it? Clearly, you're on board with it. I just don't know if I can be, Mike. I don't know. Make That's no mistake about pick, it. Mike. That's a flat screen pick. You asked about a wide receiver that I'd like. I think I'd like him. But I definitely want to go defense early. Yes! And, and I am about the BPA, though. Make no mistake about it. If a player falls that shouldn't be there and it's something that we got, don't just pick a position of need just because you got to do it. Get the best player available. But I want BPA mixed with need, right? Corner, edge. I think those are the two positions I really would love to get this fixed in this year's draft. I, I think corner, they can wait till the second round. The edge. It'd be interesting to see about Marshawn Nealon because he's rising up draft boards. He was considered like a third round pick. Now I think more of a second round pick, but I want to get those positions fixed. But I tell you what, if it's just Chop Robinson available and <laughs> TJ Tampa sitting there at 29, okay, I'm going to go ahead and go. Maybe I'll go Mitchell. Maybe I'll go offensive line if one of those guys were there. Because so I just don't think they're that actually helps the team out. It's, to me, it's not BPA, it's just picking because you need that spot. And I, I'm not for that at all. See, that's why I love Someone it. Someone argue Jameer Gibbs what about, is a flat screen TV pick. All right, well, that, you know what? Maybe you needed he one. He might have been. You needed one. You needed one in the basement. We got it, all right? <laughs> you don't need to know. Mike, Mike what, about, uh, what about Darius Robinson? <laughs> if they pick Darius Robinson, are you in on that? I've been a Darius Robinson fan, and I've, I've kind of – gone to where hey if they take him at 29 i'm happy because yep it boosts up that defensive line are you in on that pick because people seem half and half on that 
I am in on Darius Robinson. I like Darius Robinson. I like his work ethic. I like what he does on the field, unlike Chop Robinson, was not producing as much as he is. I think the most important thing about our draft picks, at least for me, is a lot of these, everyone's coming in the draft is extremely talented. But what makes players generally bust is injuries or work ethic or what they're going to do off the field. Darius Robinson's a Lions fan. He wants to be a Detroit Lion. He grew up being a Lions fan. So having somebody that loves this team go into a place where he wants to go, kind of like a, I don't know if you heard Aiden Hutchinson, not saying he's going to produce like that, but that's where he wants to be. So I, I would be completely comfortable with that because I don't think he would be a bust. I don't think yep. so. I think this is exactly be a great spot for him right here with Hutch, Dan Campbell, this defensive line. So I would love to have him. I don't know if he's going to be there at 29. I think he actually goes before. I, yeah, I've seen, I, I truly I've seen a do. lot of mocks. I'm going at like 25, 26, 27, yeah. and you're you're just missing out on him. I would love him. A lot of people, and I've even seen in the chat now, a lot of people are kind of out saying that he's like a Josh Pascal. He's he's not going to be a great I, – I think he's going to be an impactful player on the other side of Hutch. I, I think it's an upgrade over like a Marcus Davenport in my opinion. Well, that yeah, it's definitely an upgrade over Dak. Hey, I'm just throwing out the obvious. I'm just throwing out the obvious here. We want to make sure we upgrade that spot. Yeah, for sure, for sure. He's definitely upgraded over over uh, Marcus Davenport. And look, I'm not a poo pooing Davenport, but it's okay. I'm I'm in that boat. You know what Mike. I'm saying? I'm just shitting all over him. Yeah, that's a poo Like, do you want to put all your eggs in that basket? No, no way you want to do that. That I mean, especially after last year, we seen we were so close. It's like, dude, we just need another edge. Is that Davenport injury prone guys? You're not not producing at a high level. I do not want to put more eggs in that basket when we're a team that's trying to win a Super Bowl. We're not trying to get there. We're trying to win a Super Bowl at this point. So I would love to get an edge, and and Robinson is one I do like. Yep. Yeah, it's and it, Mike. We no, kind of talked talked about it uh, a little bit last time. Jaden Daniels, obviously, uh, there's rumors that he doesn't want to go to Washington. And JJ McCarthy stocks kind of been ra- rising. He's plus eight hundred to go number two. Uh, just want to know your thoughts on that. And uh, do you think uh, his JJ McCarthy kind of has potential to uh, be that quarterback in the NFL? I like JJ McCarthy. I he doesn't have that many snaps right as a quarterback and throwing the football as much as these other guys. But I think his intangibles are great. I think he's a he's a workaholic. What I like about him, he can extend play. We've seen that at Michigan, right? He's in extending a play. And my fear is he's going to go to a team like the Minnesota Vikings where they do have a ton of weapons, and he necessarily would not have to start this year because they already got a bridge quarterback over there. I do like his potential. Depends where he goes. Jaden Daniels, hey, suck it up, dude. <laughs> You're going to be a commander. <laughs> Sucks to be you, man. <laughs> no, but that that that's a bad organization, and I, I'm sure he really doesn't want to be a part of something like that. But look, this is the NFL draft. Worst team picks first, best team picks last, unless there's a trade. And you're just going to have to suck it up, man. Like, stop being diva. These guys should be happy to be drafted in the NFL. So it is what it is. Right. Yeah, Mike. And over the weekend, it was announced that Kirby Joseph, he had a surgery. I believe it was on his hip. Do you think that has any impact with Brad drafting, especially when you talk about when you want to make this Super Bowl run? It's important to pick up those early wins on in the season so that can help you later on with seeding. I think they're going to go for a safety anyways, maybe in the sixth or seventh round or a fifth round, something that you can develop regardless of, of Jay Kerb. Jay Kerb had that surgery, but you've seen he was wearing the uniform and he was jumping around, rolling around. He said he's good to go. I think he'll be good to go. I don't think they're too worried about uh, Kirby Joseph's health going forward. I think he'll be ready for training camp. But, yeah, they're they're probably going to get a safety in this year's draft for sure because they only got really three on the roster right now. I need to have another guy, someone you could develop, doesn't need to play right away because you got good safeties. You got Kirby. You got Brian Branch. You got Efutu Malafonwu. They're not trading, by the way. And so when you have these players, I don't know if you guys read that article. Holy cow. But, yeah, the, we got some good young players on this team, and safety right now is a pretty good spot. We just need depth if there's an injury uh, to one of these guys. I'll ask you before you go, Mike, and this is just for my ego. I'll admit it. It's for my ego. Kool-Aid McKinstry, what do you think of the player? I like Kool-Aid McKinstry. I do. My, my worry is, will he be there at 29? It's going to be really close. I think it's True. between 25 and, and 29 is her, his, his spot. I know a lot of people are indifferent about him, 
but he's got a great pedigree. Alabama, he did really well in Alabama. Him and Terry, they were just killing it over there. And so I think he'd fit great with the mentality that he has. He doesn't necessarily need to be a number one. If the Lions were to take him at 29, he could wait a little bit, right? We got Amik Robertson. We got Char- we got Davis there. So he could come in. I think I think he would probably be number two starting. And, and at some yep. point during the season, he'll be like a point of Derek Barnes or a new F- Futu Melfun where you kind of just kind of take over that role. So I like Kool-Aid McKinstry. I do. I think that would be a solid pick. If we're sitting at 29, the two players I'm looking at is Darius Robinson and Kool-Aid McKinstry. Those are the two love guys that. that my personal preference is. I love, I love it. it. Hey, real quick, Jeff, I want to add one more question here real quick for, for Mike. I, I want to ask, because I know you mentioned you think he's going to trade up. Now, when he trade, like, say he does trade up to, say, 15, whatever it is, um, not – Say Quinion's gone and uh, Jared versus there. One player I want to know your opinion on is Latu because he has had this injury situation um, where he he kind of retired, came back, um, and that's been like the whole thing around him is he does have the talent and he has what it takes to to play in the NFL. But this injury that just looms over him that everyone's talking about, would you be okay if the Lions did trade up and t- took Latu, or are you kind of hey let's stay away from him, let's just go towards verse and and, and the safer option. I definitely would take Verse over Latu. First off, I like Verse just talent-wise over Latu. Latu is a good edge. He's talented, extremely talented. I don't know about you guys, but we have taken risk on players like Levi and Wuzurike. We've taken uh, risk on players, Jameson Williams, Joshua Pasca. Some of these guys worked out, and some, like Levi, has not really gone to that point. If we're going to trade up, I want it to be a... I want it to be where I know this guy is going to produce on Sunday and I don't need to worry. And to me, I would rule out the injury for a trade up such as that. I would. If you're looking at two players, one guy produced healthy, the other guy produced injured, unretired, come back. I want to have a more of a sure thing and not screw this pick up because we did that with Jamison Williams. We traded up there for an injured player and and we're happy now. We're trying to win to a Super Bowl right now. That's what we're trying to do, and I, I want to be confident that the player that we pick up in a trade-up is going to be producing on Sundays at least most of 17 weeks and, and beyond that. And before, real quick, uh, we got a question from the chat, and then we'll uh, we'll let you get back to your uh, your day, Mike. But Bo Booth says, Mike, how far do you think Brad is willing to trade up? I think 14 or 15. I'd be starting to look at those numbers. It's just what I'm starting to believe, in all honesty – is that's as far as they'll probably go up. If you go any far, you're trying to get to the top 10, you're going to have to give up next year's first round pick. That is something that Brad Holmes, I don't believe would do at all. He doesn't like to give up that big of a future asset right. to win right now. And that, that would be not as smart for this team, right? You need to have your draft picks. We're not the Rams here. We don't F those picks. We like our draft picks here. And so I think, you know, 14 or 15 is probably the highest they'll go. All right. Great stuff, Mike. We appreciate you. Uh, you guys can tune in, of Appreciate course. You, Mike. Lions talk about chat sports. Tune in to Mike. He'll be covering the draft. He's been covering the draft, and I'm sure you'll have a draft show planned on Thursday. Mike, we'll talk to you soon, my man. All right. Take it easy, guys. Have a good one. All right. There you go. Mike or Mike joining the program. Good friend of the program. No. Well.